Episode 6 of Technorama, my Nebula original series, is out now. More about that at the end of the video. What's the brand color of Samsung? Dark blue, right? Huawei? Red. Oppo? Green? Xiaomi? Orange. You know this, right? Everyone knows this. Except go to Samsung.com right now and the logo you'll see there is black and white. With not a touch of Samsung's own blue to be seen anywhere on the page. Go to Oppo.com and again, no green to be seen anywhere. It's black and white all the way. Vivo.com? Well, the only blue that I can find is from the logo of Zeiss, not Vivo. Theirs is black and white. These brands, of course, still use colors in some places, like in the so-called fav icon of these same pages, weirdly, which we'll get back to in a little bit. But more and more often, you'll just see them going fully monochrome or demoting their brand color to a simple accent color instead of letting it dominate dominate everything. So in this episode of the Story Behind series, let's talk about why brands use colors in the first place and why secretly most of them can't actually wait to get rid of them. You have probably seen one of these logo timelines before, usually in the context of someone being upset that a brand is losing all of its originality. And yes, we'll talk about simplification in general in this video a little bit as well, but I wanted to focus on colors in particular, which goes beyond just simplification. And to understand this trend, we have to start with some of the first logos and brand identities that these companies gave themselves when they got started, which tend to be either quite colorful or or rather ornamental, or sometimes even both. And this makes sense. A small company just starting out really has two goals with their brand. First, they want to stand out from the crowd and they want to be remembered at any cost. And since clear colors and ornaments are a great way to stand out and to be remembered, new companies that are often lost in the sea of others can almost not afford to not use them. And second, the company needs to very clearly and also quickly introduce what the company and their products are all about. They're unknown to most people, so they need to introduce themselves at a glance. And clear shapes can describe what a company does right away, while colors are typically associated with certain qualities and emotions, so brands pick their colors to communicate what they are all about. Orange and yellow for youthful and dynamic, green for calm and peaceful, blue for something that is solid, reliable, and technology-driven, red for something that is fast-moving and maybe even a little bit aggressive, etc. Colors are, of course, more subtle than explicit shapes, but they do make us feel a certain way about a company on a subconscious level, which small brands can use to quickly establish themselves and their values as they introduce themselves to new audiences. So that's why smaller companies do it. They need to be memorable right out of the gate. So why would bigger companies then go ahead and throw all of that away? Well, first, they simply don't need them as much anymore, as they're not unknown entities that need to introduce themselves all the time. Everyone knows who Samsung or Apple is and what they do, so brand colors become kind of optional. Second, as a company grows and starts to do many, many things, its logo and brand then has to start fitting all of those many different products, services, and activities. The logo has to squeeze into big and small places, it has to work on physical products, which use all sorts of colors and materials, where the logo has to match the product design and the manufacturing process. It has to fit digital products of all kinds, etc., many of which might not fall under one consistent umbrella anymore. Oh, and of course, brands also start collaborating with many other brands, which means that their logos have to become even more flexible. It's hard to stick to one specific color and one elaborate shape at this point and to make it fit all of that. Now, some brands like Anchor solve this by launching a new brand with a new logo for every new product category that they have so that they can remain distinct and fitting to the actual product line, but others like Apple and Samsung just use one logo for everything, so almost by definition, the logo has to become as abstract as possible. That means either a shape that's just made to be as simple as possible, or a brand name written out in a simple font, and it also means abstracting the color away as well and letting it change based on what it appears on. And third, while a bright color is memorable, it is usually not very elegant. So it's typically brands who want to be seen as premium that lose their colors first. 
Apple was one of the first major phone brands to go fully monochrome, and since then others like Samsung, Oppo and Vivo have been leaning into it as well, as they're all trying to establish themselves more and more as upscale brands. Nothing and Sony of course started fully black and white, as they both positioned themselves as designer brands from the start, while brands like Realme and Xiaomi typically still use their brand colors in most of their materials, for example their websites. Now these two have lately also been using less and less of their bright colors as they have grown up, but they still usually want to communicate heavily that they offer aggressive prices, so going fully black and white might just send a bit of a wrong message. I remember this case study about Ryanair in university, where apparently the company intentionally paints their cabins with the ugliest shade of yellow and makes all of its marketing materials look cheap on purpose, which in part was chosen to remind consumers that this in fact is a cheap flight that they're on, that it is great value, and there's a hint of that in Realme's and Xiaomi's branding in my opinion as well. These aren't intentional potentially ugly of course, unlike Ryanair, but they do aim to be a little bit more playful and dynamic than just super premium, which helps them clearly communicate that affordability is still a key part of their brands. That said, whenever they do launch a very expensive product, well, looky looky, that's a black and white logo right there, cause premium. So actually they really just use a mix of both depending on the context. And in fact, a lot of these brands do. They use both the monochrome and the colorful logos depending on the context. So let's talk about which one they use when. So black and white are typically used in places like a brand's own website, which we've already discussed, a brand's own launch event or other similar get-togethers, and also often its own stores and dedicated shelves in retailers, especially the high-end ones. Meanwhile, the color logo is typically used in cheaper, busier spaces where there are a lot of distractions. Opal and Vivo are well known for painting streets green and blue across South and Southeast Asia, for example, where standing out is hard and important. And as I've mentioned, the browser tabs almost always use colors, even nothing does, despite their logo being monochrome. And on social media too, most brands use a colorful profile picture as well. And the reason for these differences is that the logos have a completely different purpose in each place. Colors are often used when people have to identify one brand among many others, be it on a busy street or a busy social media feed or a busy browser with many tabs. In that case, color often helps to stand out and be memorable. Meanwhile, when you are already watching a brand's launch event or you are in their physical store or on their website, they have your attention completely already. Their goal then is no longer to stand out from the crowd, but rather to convince you that their brand is fancy while also letting their products shine. Making everything else neutrally colored while only leaving the products themselves in color is a great way to draw your attention to those and to make them look even more exciting. And it's really as simple as that for colors. And to finish up, I have one more question for you. Do you like Japanese movies, series, anime, science fiction, that kind of stuff? If yes, I've just made a thing that I think you will really enjoy. It's episode 6 of Technorama that just came out, my big budget Nebula original series, which is all about film analysis and putting movie tropes into cultural context, and my last episode is all about Japan and how their science fiction has found a uniquely positive take on robots and technology in general. We cover classics from the early days, but also works like Akira and Neon Genesis Evangelion, so if you like Japanese cinema, I think you will really enjoy this. I've made five other episodes, each about a different movie topic as well before. I think they all turned out great and they are all available on our streaming service Nebula, which hosts tons of originals from educational YouTubers including me, but also all of our regular videos, ad-free and sometimes early access, and signing up helps us support our work. CuriosityStream hasn't specifically sponsored this video, but they are a channel sponsor and the best way to get Nebula is through the CuriosityStream in the link in the description, where you get both services for a full year for 15 bucks. That's a ton of great content for the money, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.